So since the start of this YouTube channel, it feels like we've gone through a lot of chapters, you know, from back at the one three days to now playing some bigger games on stream. A lot has happened. This building and this property that I'm at today are responsible for perhaps the most important chapter in that storyline. Right, so this is Morongo Casino Resort Spa and all of that stuff. As you guys know, or maybe you don't, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I spent the majority of my poker grinding days right here playing 5, 10, 20. And this was the place that allowed me to translate from some of the smaller games like 1, 3 and 2, 5 up to 5, 10, 20, occasionally 20, 40, etc. And thus has allowed me to take shots in those stream games that luckily have gone well so far. Couldn't have happened without this place. Well, technically, I guess it could have since there are two five and five ten games all over LA, but none like here. This place has just a character that those LA places can't replicate. Certainly not Las Vegas. No offense to anyone out there. The action here is great. People are friendly and it's just got its own unique vibe. So today I'm taking us down memory lane. I'm gonna go play some five ten twenty. I'm not gonna be making my way out here very much anymore, especially since I live in Orange County now, which is like an hour away from here. But for today, let's enjoy the beauty that is Morongo Poker. That's enough talking. Let's go play some cards. All right, guys, here we are again, this time playing a bit smaller than usual, 5, 10, 20, no limit at Morongo. I sit down with $5,000, and in the first interesting hand, I put on the straddle to 40. This is a three blind game by default, so this fourth blind is technically the first straddle. Anyway, button opens to $110. Original straddler calls, or third blind, whatever you wanna call it. And I look down at a nice start to today's session, pocket kings, make it 575 to go. Original razor folds on the button, but when it gets back to the third blind, he says he's only gonna call if I'm willing to check it down. This is a friendly bunch, so I say sure. Also not gonna be too hesitant about doing that with a hand like pocket kings. So we go off to see five cards, which comes down king high. Turns out my opponent flopped bottom set with pocket sevens though, so if we hadn't checked it down, it would have been some fireworks for sure, but that's fine, I'll take it. And the next one, the straddle is on once again to 40. There's two limpers and I look down at seven four of diamonds on the button. I'll be the first to say, should probably just fold this one, especially after two people limp in, but I'm feeling a bit frisky. So I raise it up instead to $200. Straddle calls as do both of the limpers. So four of us going to a flop, which comes ace, queen, six, two spades, one club. Absolutely nothing for me. Well, I guess you could say I have three to a straight since there is a six out there but that's about the best way I could put this seven high. However, the action checks to me, and since there's an ace out there and you know some big cards, I'm gonna pretend I've got something. So I bet $200. Again, probably not recommended against three opponents. Two of the players call, so we go three ways to a turn, which is the ace of hearts. Checks all the way to me again, and I know what you're thinking, this would just be a suicide bluff. And I couldn't disagree with that, but for some reason I continue bluffing $500, thinking that it's fairly unlikely either one of these guys has an ace since there's two of them out there and, you know, no one raced pre-flop, etc. Somehow it ends up working. They both fold and we win this one with seven high. Good result, but probably a bad process. Shortly after, this hand goes down where there's a middle position open to 50, and I look down at 10-8 of diamonds. Not really strong enough to call, so I think the better course of action is to either re-raise or let it go. This time, I choose the aggressive route and raise it up to $200, after which only the original raiser calls. So we go heads up in position to a flop of ace-9-4 with two spades. He checks, and on this kind of board, I think going a few different ways makes sense. This time, I choose something that I don't do too often and bet the size of the pot, $405. Well, you know, close enough. 
hoping to fold out small pocket pairs or any sort of high card that is obviously beating my 10 high, but he's having none of it and makes the call. Looking for some help on the turn to continue barreling, and sure enough, that's what we get, the deuce of diamonds, giving me a backdoor flush draw, about the best you could hope for after this particular flop. He checks it again, and I'm going to continue betting. Shutting down also seems okay, since he's probably going to have at least a decent hand after calling a big bet on the flop. But I think we could still get some folds from hands like any nine, maybe a small ace, although that might be kind of hopeful, any sort of flush draw. Yeah, all those sorts of holdings, I wouldn't be surprised to see him fold them. So I bet $1,800, 150% the size of the pot. This is what I'd be doing if I had a set, aces up, ace king, you know, all the good stuff. So doing it with bluffs seems logical as well. But unfortunately, once again, my opponent calls. So it seems like he's definitely got something at least pretty good. River is the six of hearts. No help to me. He checks it to me a third time, and now we have to decide between emptying the clip or just shutting it down. He's got around $4,000 behind, so a good amount of chips left to try to make him fold. But after he calls the flop and the turn, despite me using very big sizings, I feel like he's at least got a big ace. And I don't really know if we can expect him to fold that. Seems like he's sort of made up his mind on the turn, and this river in particular shouldn't change much. So I decide to wave the white flag and shut it down. But perhaps I should have gone for it because my opponent turns over ace jack. Who knows, maybe he would have let that one go, maybe not, maybe we save some money, I don't know. What I do know is we lose a lot of chips in this one, but move right along to this next one where there's a late position open to $100, and I look down at king seven suited in the small blind. Similar to the last hand, should probably just fold this one most of the time, but occasionally re-raising suited kings from the blinds I think is a good strategy, so I kick it up to $400. And my opponent makes the call. So once again, going heads up to a flop, this time out of position. And we get a similar situation as last time. It comes ace-jack-6 with two hearts. So an ace-high board with the flush draw out there. Once again, I've got backdoor diamonds going on. And an ace out there is uh, something I can try to represent. So I continue with a small bet. 275. My opponent calls. Turn card is the six of spades. Usually on board pairing cards, it's not a good idea to continue bluffing, I think. At least not in this situation, but once again, I'm feeling frisky today. And that's just an excuse for not playing my best, albeit somewhat willingly. I bet $600, hoping to get a fold from a jack or a flush draw, just like the last hand. But of course, my opponent is having none of it. My table image is not great at this point. He once again calls. River gives us a small amount of help. It's the king of hearts. Of course, flush draws get there. And if he had an ace, uh, it doesn't really make any difference. But somehow, after I check it, he checks it back. And we end up winning. So perhaps he was calling down with a non-believing jack. Which, of course, he was right to do. But we get lucky and end up winning this $2,600 pot. Now for this next hand, I have to give you guys a little bit of a warning. The seven deuce game was on, and if you guys don't know what that is, all it means is that if you win a hand with seven deuce and turn it over, the rest of the table owes you a certain amount of money. In this case, it was $50 per person. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the seven deuce game, but in case you weren't, there you go. So in this hand, there's a middle position open to $200. Late position calls, and I look down at 7-deuce offsuit in the big blind. Now, it doesn't take a genius to understand that we only stand to win $400 if I were to win this one. We're nine-handed, so eight opponents, $50 a piece. That's $400 total. So that begs the question, is it worth really risking much to try to win this game? No, but to that, I would argue... It's a lot of fun, so I'm gonna go for it. I make it $1,050. Middle position folds, that's a good sign. He was the initial raiser. If there was anyone to be worried about, it's most likely him since the guy behind him would have raised with any sort of strong hand. But seems like I don't understand much about poker because initial raiser folds, but the late position player calls again. So we go heads up out of position to a flop of ace, seven, three with two clubs. Not bad, we flop middle pair, which with seven deuce offsuit is about as good as it gets, I think. I think continuing to bet makes total sense, but I decide to check it and see what he does. And what he does is announce all in right away for around $3,000. That is a weird decision, I think. If he had an ace, wouldn't he wanna get some value? If he had any sort of strong hand, I guess he'd wanna get some value. So I feel like this is most likely a draw or maybe just some sort of hand that decides, screw it, I'm going to bluff like Queen Jack suited or random air balls. This player in particular has a lot of heart. I wouldn't be surprised to see him do that. So after some thought, 
I realized, hey, we're beating flush draws, we're beating all sorts of bluffs, and uh, I don't think he would play a strong hand this way. So I make the call, aka punt, most likely, but fingers crossed that it was the right decision. Turn is the eight of clubs, doesn't look good, as now we're beating even less hands. River is the king of diamonds, again, not a great card, but it turns out it makes no difference as we were drawing pretty slim either way. My opponent's got ace-king suited. So that whole analysis about him not having a strong hand preflop because he didn't re-raise the uh, original open, I guess I was completely wrong, and he was laying in the weeds with a very nice hand. So he gets the maximum from me. Seven deuce game does not work out this time, and we lose a very big pot. Time to add on some money. A good recourse at this point seems to be, let's play good cards instead of bad ones. So that's what I decide to do here. I open in middle position with ace-king, $75. There's two callers, and then the small blind makes it $475. This is the first time all day I've actually got a real hand, so of course I'm going to re-raise as well with this one. $12.50 to go. Both callers behind me get out of the way, but the small blind comes along. So heads up, in position to an amazing flop, ace, 10, three, all diamonds. So we've got top pair, top kicker with the nut flush draw. He checks, I bet $750 and I'm happy to see he makes the call. Turn card shouldn't change anything, it's the three of hearts. He checks again and he's got like $8,000 behind so I wanna set up a somewhat pot sized all in on the river. I bet half pot now, $2,000. And once again, my opponent makes the call. Seems like he's at least got an ace at this point. Hopefully a hand like ace-queen or ace-jack suited, for example. Looking for a clean river, and that's what we get. The nine of clubs. He checks it a third time with around $6,000 remaining. And there's nothing for me to do but announce all in and hope that we get called by a worse hand. That's what I do. Luckily, we do not get snap called. That was part of the plan. Now the second part of the plan is to get called... But sadly, after some thought, he lets it go, announcing that he had a pocket pair that just did not believe me. So maybe we ended up getting the maximum with that bet on the turn. Either way, can't complain about finally winning a decent sized pot tonight. Continuing with the theme of playing good cards, I once again put on the double straddle and get pocket kings. Late position limps, button makes it $200, and then the player on my right makes it $900. Now, I'm not sure how many of you guys have been paying attention to my recent vlogs, but I've been discussing cold calling with hands like Jack-10 suited, Ace-10 suited, pocket nines, you know, the sorts of hands that want to see a flop but don't necessarily want to re-raise. And I think the only way to do that without being uh, too predictable is to occasionally cold call with hands like Aces and Kings as well. And I decide this is one of those times. Today's been kind of weird. Let's continue that. I call the $900, perhaps fingers crossed that the player behind senses some weakness and raises yet again, but that's not what ends up happening. The limper folds and the original razor on the button calls. So three ways and we are monkey in the middle, going to a flop of nine, seven, deuce, two diamonds. Original re-raiser checks in the big blind. I decide to bet half pot $1,000 because I have a pair that's bigger than the cards on the flop. Button folds, but big blind comes along for a thousand. Turn card is the seven of hearts. Big blind checks, and I decide to do something a little bit sneaky and check it back, hoping my hand looks like perhaps pocket eights or a nine, and who knows, maybe we can induce a bluff on the river. So once again, kind of a strange play on my behalf, but I check it back, and we see the nine of clubs on the river. All draws missed, so that's a good thing, I think. Big blind now leads out for around a third of the size of the pot, $1,500. I have no idea what hands he would play this way, but... I'm hoping that he has maybe pocket queens or pocket jacks that gets a little bit sneaky on the flop. Pot's pretty big at this point, and he's only got 3,000 behind, so I'm going to try to get the max from those hands. If he's got me beat, so be it. I announce all in, and he snap folds, so it turns out he was most likely bluffing. Either way, we win another decent-sized pot, and things are heading back in the right direction. Moving right along, the $40 straddle is on yet again. Early position limps, and I raise on the button with queen-10 offsuit. Not the best hand ever, but I think over one limper, it's okay to get in there with. So that's what I do. Big blind calls, limper calls as well. Three ways to a flop, and it's another good one. Queen, eight, seven, rainbow. I've got top pair. Interestingly enough, the big blind leads out on this board for $450. Early position folds, and what am I going to do, right? I flop top pair, so I call. We see the eight of hearts on the turn. Big blind does not slow down. This time he bets $1,000. Similar to the flop, I've got top pair, don't really want to fold, don't see the point in raising, so I call yet again. And we see an interesting river card, the seven of spades, double pair in the board. This time the big blind thinks for a while and ends up checking. 
Not really sure if we can get value from worse at this point. Maybe he's got a hand like pocket nines, tens, maybe even jacks that isn't sure how to play on this type of flop and decides to just continue betting. Or maybe he's got a queen himself, but we could easily be behind a hand like queen jack, king queen, even ace queen I wouldn't be too surprised to see. So instead of going for some thin value, I decide to check it back. Unfortunately, that was the wrong decision as my opponent flips over queen four of spades. So most likely a hand we could have got called by, but you know, it's always easier once you can see the cards. In the next fun hand, we play a $100 bomb pot seven ways. So 700 in the middle and I get five three offsuit in middle position. Not the best cards ever, but when the flop comes eight four deuce rainbow, now we've got an open-ended straight draw. That seems like good news to me. So early position bets $300. I call, hoping no one raises behind me, and sure enough, everyone folds. So just two of us going to a turn card, which is a very good one. The six of diamonds, giving me essentially the nuts. I mean, yeah, seven five beats me, but let's just pretend that that's not the case. Early position bets $600 this time. He doesn't have a ton left behind, maybe like... 2000 or so so instead of raising now i decide to just call and set the trap this is part of the advantage of being in position so i call and we see the board pair on the river six of hearts not the best card ever of course as now we lose to any sort of flop sets or perhaps a turn two pair sort of hand but when early position continues with a bet of eleven hundred dollars I decide to rip it all in for his remaining 1500 or so. If he's got me beat, so be it, but I'm gonna try to get the max from any sort of good hand that we're still ahead of. Turns out that's not gonna happen as my opponent flips over ace king and lets it go. Obviously he was bluffing all the way. No complaints on my end, of course, as we turn a very nice hand and are now up a good amount of money. The very next shuffle, another interesting hand develops where I get pocket nines, raise it up to $75, late position calls, and then the button re-raises to 350. Small blind cold calls the 350. Don't really know what's up with that, but when it gets back to me, I think re-raising again might be a little too optimistic, although I don't hate the idea of it. However, this time I decide to just call, as does the player behind me who originally called my $75 open. So Four of us going to a flop, which is amazing. Ace, queen, nine, giving me bottom set, and not just that, but it's hopefully a board that the re-raiser will interact with. But, you know, not interact more than I'm interacting. I don't want him to have a bigger set, is what I'm trying to say, okay? Anyway, the action checks all the way to him on the button, and sure enough, he does bet $1,250. I'm the only caller of this bet, and we see a not great turn card, the 10 of diamonds. Now, if he was bluffing the flop with perhaps King Jack or, you know, some straights are possible is what I'm getting at. But what am I going to do? I've got bottom set. I'm not going anywhere. I check again, and this time he bets $2,000. Quite the sizable bet. He's only got like 2000 remaining after this $2,000 bet. So considering that he's put almost his entire stack into this pot, I highly doubt he'll fold now. And I don't want to call and have him check back on the river. So I decide to just check raise all in. But it turns out that was a mistake because my opponent laughs and folds seven deuce face up. Honestly, I forgot we were playing that game. At least I did during this hand. I definitely didn't think he would have that. But it turns out I uh, maybe lost a little bit of money since if I had just called, maybe he would have uh, shoved all in on the river hoping I fold something. But I'm just going to try to get some sleep at night by convincing myself he was just going to give up on the river. We won another decent sized pot and with that we move to the last hand of the night where the $40 straddle is on yet again. I raise queen jack offsuit to 150 and par for the course get four callers. Welcome to Morongo. Flop comes down queen 6 4 all hearts. Action checks all the way around. I don't really want to bet into four opponents with just top pair on a board like this. Turn card is the 10 of diamonds. Shouldn't really change anything. This time the small blind leads out for $300. Of course, after checking top pair on the flop, I'm not going anywhere. So I call and only two of us are going to a river, which is the six of diamonds. This time the small blind bets $900. And I gotta admit, this is the first semi-tough spot of the day. After underrepresenting my hand, it seems a little bit strange to just fold to this river bet. But for whatever reason, I feel like we're beat. I'm also keeping in mind that he let out on the turn into four opponents, so most likely he's got something at least decent, I would imagine, but who knows? People have a lot of heart here at Morongo. 
After thinking about it for a minute, I give my opponent an offer of revealing a card to me for $100, to which he happily obliges. So I toss him 100 and he flips over the five of hearts. Hmm. So I guess the only hands we're beating are seven five offsuit that randomly starts bluffing on the turn or maybe a hand like pocket fives with a heart. But aside from that, I think we're most likely going to be up against a flopped flush. So I end up letting it go reluctantly, but my opponent's nice enough to flip over the ace five of hearts for the flopped nut flush. Nice hand, man. And uh, I was happy with myself for exercising some caution, something I haven't been doing too much today. And uh, yeah, that was a happy ending to this particular session. Shortly after the game ended up breaking. So as always, I hope you guys enjoy the hands. So, uh, that was a complete bloodbath, as you guys saw. At least in terms of a 5, 10, 20 game, I don't think it can get much crazier than that. And I'll be the first to say, I think I played like shit tonight, or at least close to it. There were so many decision points and moments where I could have made some better plays, but instead chose suboptimal plays, uh, to put it lightly, which got myself in the hole for like eight or $9,000 at one point. It was kind of embarrassing. That seven deuce versus ace king hand, <laughs> not my proudest moment. It's kind of hard to be like super disciplined when I've been playing considerably uh, larger stakes than these. It's tough to come over here and, you know, make the correct folds and stuff like that. But I try to clean it up near the end. And uh, luckily I did paired with some run good I somehow ended up winning over $10,000 when it was all said and done. Another roller coaster session. If you guys saw the last vlog, it was uh, very similar to this. I feel like I can't complain at all about how tonight ended. I definitely should have lost, but that's the beauty of poker. You know, it's not about what you deserve. It's just about what ends up happening. And sometimes people who deserve to win end up losing and vice versa. I'll happily take it. Anyway, this was, uh, I think, the second to last vlog of the year. I believe my last one will be from uh, a couple of sessions that I'm playing on Hustler this upcoming week. Wednesday and Thursday, I will be on stream playing some more big games. And that's it for poker in 2022. So I think I'll cover my end of the year poker results in that video. So if you guys uh, are interested in that, stay tuned. But aside from that, I got nothing. I'm exhausted. I got to go to bed early morning tomorrow for Argentina versus France. Fingers crossed. All right, guys, as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support. Until next time, good luck at the tables. Peace.